Merry Christmas to all from the poor friars and poor nuns of Jesus and Mary. Dear brothers and sisters, after we celebrated Mass today, I was asked to give a video message for Christmas, giving a message on the true meaning of Christmas through the representation of the Nativity. The Italian word for uh, Christmas, Natale, comes from Natali, means being born. So for us, Christ is born on Christmas. So I wish you, I wish for all of us, that Jesus may be born. Asking ourselves, who is Jesus for me? Who is Jesus for us? Jesus is the living word. He is the word of God put into practice. I wish all of us that this Christmas we can put the word of God into practice. Uh, Pope Ratzinger said that Jesus, the one, not the statue, but the one that it represents, that he becomes flesh with our flesh. So through our gestures, through our movements, through our way of life. But in order to do this, let's start with the Nativity, because we've seen many this year, and also the past years. So let's start with this phrase of Saint Padre Pio who says, O Bethlehem, how many Christian teachings are there when we look at the Nativity? Let's start by the comet. What does the comet make us think of? Here we look at creation, so we look at the stars, the cosmos, uh, the Magi kings were people who have studied, powerful people, rich people, who came from the East, other religions, people who have a scientific mind who are powerful and who, through creation, may search for the Creator. As it says in Wisdom 13, where the Lord says, How come that from the good things seen they did not succeed in knowing the one who made them, the Creator? And also in Romans 1 it says this, uh, more or less. Also in the Second Vatican Council, in the Dei Verbum uh, 5, it says that even just using the human reason, without the help of grace, though even our mind is a grace, by looking at creation, at the stars, we can know with certainty that God exists, with certainty. So the stars help us, like the Magi kings who, who start their journey, looking at the mystical star of which uh, we read in the Gospel. So they can get more or less close to Jesus, to the Creator, to the one who made everything. But when they get to Herod, they ask where Jesus might have been born, because there was the star. So they need the scribes who uh, take the scriptures and the scriptures, the sacred scripture, that is the Bible. It tells you precisely the place where Jesus has been born, in Bethlehem. So there's the prophecy about Bethlehem, which means uh, the house of bread, where there's the food for all. Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven and that gives us the eternal life. So the scriptures are the true star. Ratzinger said, when I studied in Rome, whilst I was doing my licentiate in sacred fundamental theology, he said to all of us students who were there in Rome that the comet par excellence is the sacred scriptures. That points us to the living word. That's, the Bible is the lamp, but the living light is Jesus, who is the head, and through baptism and through our life we are inserted into him. And so also we can be a living word. So we already talked about the star, uh, you can see here. I've only written some uh, words here. So just to remember what we can see in the nativity scene. The angels and the signs. The shepherds see those angels who say that famous phrase that we hear when a new pope is elected. We announce to you a great joy. Even before the Pope, uh, the angels say about Jesus, Today in the city of David, a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. And this is a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. What's the sign here? In the mentality of the Israelites, seeing a child wrapped in swaddling clothes was normal, but that he was laying in a manger, there was something unusual. So if you pay attention to signs, and we pay attention to the angels, who can talk to us also at night, in the night of this life. 
they talk to us about mysterious, intimate things you know, that maybe we talk about afterwards. If you pay attention, we can find exactly, together with others, those signs that let us see where there is the way in order to get to Jesus, who is the true way, who leads us to paradise, the cave. The cave where Jesus is born is a figure of our heart that we have to dust off. Where we welcome Jesus in that stable of our heart, the cave of our heart, where there's truly much filth, and we have to try to clean it up. Starting also by the topic of poverty, because we have to be detached from material things. Because if we are attached to material things, and we talk about heaven, and the people who see us say, they talk about heaven, but they are attached to the things of the earth. More than usual, that he is not even able to take a step forward each 10 years. So why are they talking to me about heaven if they don't even believe in it? But if people see us detached from material things, even detached from our life, then they start to think, maybe these have seen something, and then they start to ask themselves truly about the meaning of Christmas. The child Jesus is the living word, we said, but also a child. Why a child? Jesus himself explains that to us. He says, if you don't convert and turn like little children, unless you turn and become like children, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven because the door is narrow. Sometimes we strive too much to study and make a doctorate and learn difficult words. But as someone said, their head is so big they won't even fit in the coffin. So let's just imagine if they get to heaven. The Lord wants us to be like children, simple. They ask their mom and dad questions. In this case, to God the Father and Mary, who is the mother. Dad, what does this or that mean? Mom, what does that mean? I don't understand that. Help me to understand. You said this, but what does it mean? Why is this Christmas happening? What does this mean? It wouldn't mean anything for us if there was not the death and resurrection of Jesus. That makes the difference of meaning for this child. Because if this child had only been born and then died, he would be like many others, but he makes the difference because then he rises from the dead, promising the resurrection also to us. We also see Mary in the nativity scene. This here has been set up without much effort. And Saint Joseph. What do we learn in this uh, nativity scene from Mary? There are so many things to learn from this Miri Yam, uh, that means a drop of the sea. As a Bible scholar said, we can learn from Mary that she conceives the truth in an immaculate way because she loved the scriptures. We see that in the Magnificat and then she gives birth to God. So if you are like her, lovers of the truth, of the perfect truth, uh, the truth that Jesus Christ proclaims through the Pope, through the, the Apostles, through the Catholic Church, where there's the fullness of the means of salvation, also we can with certainty uh, give birth through the truth, the truth of Jesus, the love of Jesus, like Ratzinger said, he becomes flesh with our flesh. As Pope Benedict XVI said, when he was the reigning Pope, Joseph. What can we learn from Joseph? What's the channel through which St. Joseph uh, listened to the Word of God? First of all, Joseph was a just man, observer of the law, that means of the Old Testament. But then Joseph was also always open to understand. So he sees his betrothed pregnant. So he wants to send her away secretly. So he's a person who doesn't point his finger. He doesn't want to do damage to his neighbor, even though he's a sinner. But he tries to do everything to help her. So the Lord was pleased by this behavior of Joseph. And he wanted him with a vision and dream, as it's written about St. Francis in the Omnibus of Sources. Also St. Martin of Tours, after he gave half of his mantle, Jesus came to him in a dream. So God likes uh, the behavior of Joseph. And in a dream he tells him, Don't be afraid in taking Mary with you. What is begotten in her comes from the Holy Spirit. So don't fear. Joseph obeys. He takes her as his bride. And also when he saves baby Jesus' life through a dream. And when he has to give the name to his son, he receives it in a dream. Now we could say that we cannot be dreamers. But this is the public revelation in the Bible, the Old and the New Testament. As the Vatican Council says, that starts with the Old Testament and comes to a conclusion in the New Testament, where God speaks to us. And then the magisterium of the Church, the tradition of which St. Paul also speaks, explains to us that there are three types of visions. 
There's the vision through one's senses, there's uh, the vision through our intellect, and an interior vision. Joseph's vision was an interior vision, like the one of the children of Fatima. Ratzinger said when he spoke about the children of Fatima, when they saw that the Pope was shot, the vision spoke about dangers and the way of being safe from the danger. It's not like a film preview of the future that cannot be changed, but rather it can change the powers of evil into good. So through their prayer, the children win over the gun of Ali Akcha. I guess that was his name. When he shoots at him, that bullet moves away a little bit from its trajectory and doesn't kill him John Paul II. So he stayed with us for another 20 years and did so much good. It starts already in the gospel, the public revelation. So when someone has like an interior perception and an interior vision, Ratzinger said it's not forbidden to tell the others, but if someone wants to make it public, it has to be in line with the morals of the church and its teaching, the magisterium. Ratzinger says that these um, manifestations in dreams, as we now see in the Maedra kings, it's not imagination, it's a touch of a superior origin that comes from on high, which helps man to live the gospel in a better way today. But there's no obligation to use them, as there's no obligation of doing the will of God. But those who want to go to heaven have to pass the narrow door and should not only be like children, but also intelligent like St. Joseph, and try not to accuse anyone and to welcome the light that comes within you, even when you're asleep. Because my heart gives me instructions even at night, then uh, one tries to find the way. The Magi Kings. The same thing happened to the Magi Kings. So after the Magi Kings uh, through the star got closer to God, but to get to the exact point they need the sacred scriptures, then uh, to save their life uh, from Herod who wants to kill them. So in the dream the Lord shows them the danger and so they avoid it. So let's pay attention to these interior manifestations. We shouldn't be too mystical and feel superior to the others because the church is very aware that someone talks about vision becomes like a visionary and he doesn't keep a certain balance, that's not believable. If you receive something like that, keep it to yourself. You don't have to make it public, because when you go to the restroom, it's not that you make a video and publish it. Those are intimate, personal things. But then afterwards, you feel better after you go to the restroom. So also when you analyze yourself by seeing those images, the shepherds, they are simple people, as we said before, who pay attention not only to the signs, and it's not just that they start walking and find the sign of the child that was wrapped in swaddling clothes and that is lying in a manger, that is the sign. But what's the sign for us if baby Jesus is born in the cave of our heart? The sign is uh, if we are wrapped up in the swaddling clothes of the Word of God, if you have the Bible in our cell phone, in our room, if you go to Mass, pray the Rosary, we have to do something. Otherwise, where is the sign that baby Jesus was born in our heart, that we have the Nativity seen in our home, but then we argue with everybody else and we don't even have the intention to forgive the others. This is not the sign that Jesus was born into our hearts. The sign is that uh, Jesus is lying in the manger of life. Do we lower our heads into the manger of life? Because if we don't eat, we die. So it's also with our soul. The oxen, the donkey, they recall a meaning in some way. That if we don't lower our heads that are often uh, full of foolishness, like the donkeys, and if we don't lower our horns of pride, like the ox, into the manger of life on the altar of the Lord, when the priest says in Persona Christi, this is my body, there is the body of Jesus. So if we don't lower our intelligence, that intelligentsia, into the manger of life, that is so little, so humble, poor, defenseless, it's from there that we learn. If you don't do that, we, we lose everything. Or we lengthen the way to heaven. If people don't receive communion, who doesn't eat my flesh and doesn't drink my blood, doesn't have life. So then there's a need of a reparation, purgatory, in order to make up for it. Then there's also the sheep. When we look at the sheep in the nativity scene, and Jesus also talks about sheep, what do we want to be? Meek, like the sheep, standing at his right, doing good deeds, corporal works of mercy, and spiritual works of mercy helping others, forgiving, having mercy with those who are hungry, those who are thirsty, when people want to be helped. 
Or are we obedient to the shepherd, to our bishops? Or are we people who are disobedient, like goats, who have horns, and we disobey the bishops? Are we say the bishop is like this and the bishop is like that? Or he shouldn't have done that, or he, he didn't come to meet with me? What kind of Christians are you who talk badly about the bishops or the Pope? I think that you're not even Catholic, not even Christians. And someone who speaks badly about the shepherd, what sense does that make? So we can see in those shepherds also the bishops. It's true that they have studied a lot, but they present themselves with humility, with uh, simplicity. They also are on their way. Also, they can get dirty, but they're always our shepherds that the Lord has given us. Or if someone speaks badly about the priests, the Lord has given us priests, also the grace to be vigilant but also we can make mistakes and then are we not good anymore when saint peter wanted to cut off the ear of the one who wanted to kill jesus what did jesus do did he throw him away or did he let him be a priest a bishop even a pope so let's learn from the lord so do we want to be sheep on the right or like the goats on the left the last thing we talk about is cold and chill cold and chill these words we take from the song uh, you come down from the stars of St. Alphonsus Maria Liguori, he comes down into the chill and the cold. How often does this happen to us in, in this world, that we are surrounded by this cold, formal behavior of this world, when you see people, also people who are dressed like me, with a habit, also priests, also friars, also nuns, also politicians, everybody, that you walk, for example, in Rome, or in important places, where there's powerful people, you greet them, peace and good, and you see them, like horses that walk, they don't even greet you. Or, or they say, what species are you? What do you mean by what species? I'm your brother. I'm of the same human race. I'm your brother. Are we not children of God? Don't we teach that from the altar? So why didn't you greet me? Why don't you smile at me? So others can see how beautiful it is when we greet each other, to embrace each other, when we call each other brothers because we believe that we have one father. And we're not normal brothers of blood. We have nothing in common. We have the way of eternal life in common. When people see us, they should fall in love. So let's pray that baby Jesus may truly guide us through his example. Also through the example of St. Francis of Assisi, because, because we didn't say that yet, but he was the first one. Because in great show, he represented the living nativity for the first time. So thanks also to the example of St. Francis of Assisi. May the Lord guide us from the poor Bethlehem to the rich Jerusalem. From the passing Bethlehem to the eternal Jerusalem. From the humble Bethlehem to the glorious Jerusalem. From the mortal Bethlehem to the immortal Jerusalem. From the earthly Bethlehem to the heavenly eternal Bethlehem. Where there is only peace, joy, glory, splendor, and no more poverty, no more misery, no suffering, no more wars, and none of these ugly things. No more violence. So baby Jesus is born to tell us these things. Because those who don't do what he says feel bad. They feel bad. Unless someone has decided to do evil. Then the psalm says that he puts them into slippery places. They're not even aware of what happens to them. In the end, they'll find the surprise. You put them into slippery places. And I understood what the end will be when I enter into your temple. So may the Lord enlighten all of us. Also those who are not interested in helping others. Because we've given our life in order that nobody may go to hell. I became a friar and also a priest. And also you who are listening. We have a friar and a nun here who are brethren of blood, but they are also brethren in the spirit. I'm going to show them to you. They're doing the video for me. Sister Clara and Friar Emmanuel from Portugal, brother and sister. The sister became a nun, and then she also brought the brother and the father and the mother with her to tell us that we have to be people who bring others with them. In the image of Jesus, we have to guide everybody with mercy towards ourselves and towards the others. From the poor, humble, as we said, uh, temporal Bethlehem to the glorious, eternal and without limits, awesome Jerusalem of heaven. In this sense, I wish you Merry Christmas that Jesus may truly be born in our hearts, cleaning up through Holy Confession and filling it up with Holy Communion, which gives us the eternal life. Because who eats my body and drinks my blood, says Jesus, has eternal life already from the present moment on. And I will raise him up in the flesh on the last day. This is my wish for all of you. Little friars, little nuns, religious, consecrates, lay missionaries who help us to do concrete deeds, corporal deeds of mercy and spiritual deeds of mercy, groups of prayer who help us more with the spiritual works of mercy and also with the corporal works of mercy. 
To all the leaders in our community of the Little Friars and Little Nuns, the leaders of our groups of prayer in different parts of the world, also the, the volunteers of the soup kitchen, and to all of our friends, and it's also to our enemies, those who wish us evil. We love them as well, because Jesus says, if you only love those who love us, what merit do we have? Our merit is to love all who speak badly about us and who don't have the courage to say things to our face, because Jesus commanded it. And it's true, if you love, we are always joyful. This is why we say, peace and good, and Merry Christmas. All for the greater glory of God in the salvation and the full joy in the light of the true Christmas, enlightened by the word of God and by the magisterium of the church.